intentional partner. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. amen.
Jesus has been a glorious three days. And the Lord has met us every single day. Amen. We're getting ready for our devotional leaders. Ask Mama, please stand. Assistant District Missionary Hattie Ben. We'll do our invocation. The scripture reading will come from District Missionary Luella Berry. Let's receive them in that order with a hearty amen. amen.
from 100 Psalms. <coughs> Say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is good. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy endured forever. And his truth endured to all generations for the people of God. and all of her staff and to all of you that are here on tonight. I want you to know this is the last night and my soul and my heart has been blessed all week long. And if you feel the same way, we just want to have a, a buffalo good time on tonight. All right? Can you say buffalo? Good time. So I want you to be quiet. Huh? I want you to make some noise. Jesus. And all that he's done for me. I don't know about you, but I just want to cry out, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God for what he's done. Yeah. Uh, we say thank God for saving me. Yeah. I thank him for saving me, yeah. but I thank him for keeping me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we thought when we got saved, that was good. And we would have no more trouble. But that's when your real trouble starts. But this time you have a power on the inside that will give you the strength to keep on pushing and to keep on striving. So we are going to praise him and thank him tonight for all that he has done for us. We are getting ready now for our evangelistic explosion. I want you all to sit attentively, but I don't want you to be too quiet. Because I know these ladies are going to bring something that's going to stir up something on the inside of us. Our speakers on tonight, the first one, is a deaconess missionary, Mia Hellums. And the with a heart of amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Come on, look out some glory. 1 Peter 1 and 16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. For my subject on tonight, I want to talk about the state of being holy. In this Christian world today, we see everyone that's trying to look the part of holiness, but are we actually being holy? What we look like being holy is not just a look, but it is a way of life. For the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, 
But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For, for the man seeth the outer appearance, but God, he looketh upon the heart. You see, while we are so worried about making ourselves appear to be holy, on the outside, your inside is messed up. You don't have to worry about looking the part of holiness on the outside because when you get Jesus on the inside, when you get Jesus on the inside, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, He will clean you from the inside out. So therefore, your holiness will not just be a look, but it will be a state of being. What do I mean by a state of being? Meaning, it will be stationary. Meaning, they can't nobody make you go astray just because you they look at you funny or just because they, you don't like the way they have been around you. It ain't going to change the way of holiness in your life. Being holy requires a level of stableness in God that you are determined to live this way no matter what comes or what goes. When you be holy for real, can't nothing shake you. When you are holy, your life, your life, it will represent the image of Christ that we say in our pledge and our YPWW training union. Y'all remember that? Amen. To let my life be the image that reflects the mirror of Christ. So if I'm saying I'm holy, when I look at my life, it should reflect holiness. It should reflect the image of Christ because we know that Jesus Christ is holy. Amen. Let me slow down. But I'm going to tell you one thing that I have decided. That I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For the Bible also says that in 1 Peter 1 and 15, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all matter of conversation. That means not only do I have to walk holy, but I have to talk holy. I gotta live holy. Being holy is a way of life. I'm not living what I'm trying. I'm not trying to live the look. I want to be what I look like. And I, I wonder sometimes what happened to the prayer that I remember my grandmother used to play. Pray. We don't hardly hear that anymore. When she used to pray, she used to say, "God." This is not in its shape, form, or fashion. But God, that you get the glory. God, I take myself down. That you be glorified. And God, don't let this flesh rise up. Because God, if I'm not who you're calling me to be, God, take out of me what's not like you. This is a prayer that I remember my grandmother praying when I was here say, oh Lord, help me today. Because God, I want to be pleasing in your sight. If you really want to be holy, you want to be pleasing My blood was low. 
and it was down to a five. And I had injections and went up the first time it went fine. The second time, it looked like I was paralyzed from my waist down. And then I kept having other stuff to go on with me. I started coughing. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sleep nothing but on my left hand side. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what's under there was going on. Okay, so I went back to the doctor. They just told me what it was. I always sound like this. But my first lady told me to go back. So I went back and told them I need an x-ray. And they did and they found something in my lung. And they said it was sarcoidosis. But how many know God has unlimited power? They did a vascular uh, down the floor. And the doctor, he was a praying doctor. He said, we're going to pray there's going to be nothing wrong with you. Well, they found six tumors in my throat. That's what caused me to be hoarse. But it was done cancerous. And I thank God for that. I went on getting here to the doctor. And everything was fine. All my levels was fine because God has unlimited power.
Jesus Christ to this Arkansas Second Jurisdiction Church of God and Christ 65th Annual Women's Convention Crusade. And on this week, we have had a Holy Ghost time. It's been powerful each night. So I welcome you here and to let you know that you're in for a blessing on tonight. But if you would just kind of look right here at the corner, this is our state supervisor. Mother Jeanette Abraham Watkins. And I'm going to ask her just to stand up because she is looking. And we're here to honor her tonight. So let's just get into this service and let's put everything that we have into it because guess what? Like the missionary said a few minutes ago, there is a miracle here tonight for you. But we also come to show our love to our state mother. She's been through a lot this year and she's still going forth in the labor of what God has planned for her to do. So let's give it all we got tonight. Let's give her love, let's show her love with everything that we have, and God will bless you for it. Are there any happy people in the house?
Thank you, Missionary Robinson, for those beautiful words. And since everybody's a part of this house and this jurisdiction, you ought to give yourselves a hand of praise. Give yourself a hand of praise. We're going to pray that God will send in more. Amen. Amen. The harvest is truly plenty, oh, yes. but the labors are what? Yeah. Are they the labors in the house? Yeah. Amen. We're getting ready to hear from our awesome choir, and we're so grateful tonight, and I thank God for this opportunity to serve our leader, our supervisor. Amen. And I, I appreciate him for welcoming me back home. Amen. Yeah. Now I have two families, second and third. And guess what I found, Mom? Oh, y'all love me. <laughs> then somebody just forgot to tell me. That's okay. Tell them, tell them they don't love me. Just, like, just let the ones who do love me say I love you. Thank you. I like that. We're getting ready to hear from our wonderful, wonderful warrior. Yeah. Have they not been blessing us this week? They are off the chain. So that's what the young folks say to me. They are off the chain. I'm from the off the hook, but they're off the chain. However way you want to put it, they have been ministering and song all week long. They have been blessing us, and we thank God for this wonderful choir. Let's receive them with a hearty amen. And after the choir will have finished, finished, we're going to give them a
be run off. this great assembly and to let you know how good God is. This week has been a week of anointing and full of the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for each of you joining in the celebration saying, Lord, have your way. Tonight, we're graced by the presence of a great leader. A wonderful leader. You may say, I know him. I know him. He's the bishop. He's the prelate. I know him. But did you know? Did you know that at the age of 18, he was called into the ministry? Six months later, he was licensed to preach. Mm -hmm. Poor pastor had a, a broadcast ministry at the age of 19. I tell you, we got somebody. Yeah. Served in the District Vanders president, District YPWW president, yeah. ordained in 1969 on the leadership of the Honorable Bishop R.B. Hatman. District superintendent, interim district superintendent of district number five. Yes. Amen. Interim and now the proud pastor of the Sinai Church of God in Christ. As well the great pastor of the Zion Temple Church of God in Christ. Amen. Served as the jurisdictional evangelist president. Amen. National evangelist from 1972 to 1996. Administrative assistant. Fresh administrative assistant. Oh, my God. But it was soon, soon, soon. Let me see my notes here. <laughs> Lady Anderson. When did he tie that knot? When? when? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, 1963. Seemed like only yesterday. Uh-huh. Baby King is wrong, right? When he said it's real, he was gone. Amen. And he's still an evangelist at heart. He may have the title of bishop, but he's an evangelist. He's a missionary for the gospel of Jesus Christ. For Paul declared, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And the second jurisdiction of Arkansas is blessed to have such an experienced and anointed man of God. Let's give him a hand of appreciation. And now, brothers and sisters, and dedicated of this great women convention, will you rise to your feet and receive this noble man of God, the great evangelist, the great pastor, and the one in living color, the bishop of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas, the honorable bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson together. Come and say, God bless our bishop. God bless you, Superintendent. God bless you. Praise the Lord. While we're standing, this has certainly been a, an anointed power pack service on this week. And even now, while you're standing close to your neighbor, there is a present in this house. If you bring a radio in, there are waves.
things that only the radio can pick up. If you bring a television in, there are ways that only the television can pick up. But amid the radio waves and the television waves, there is another way. And only those who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Can anybody remember, anybody remember rabbit ears? Sometimes, sometimes it was, you couldn't, you couldn't get your TV adjusted right. You had to take those ears and, and move it around to make the picture come in clear. Put your antennas up. We, we want to get a clear picture. Come on, adjust for this a little bit.
where I put some music with it, that the soprano say, he's not here to. Let me hear the alto say he's back here too. He's back here too. The tenor say he's back here too. He's back here too. And then, wait, no, no, I ain't ready for that. No, no don't steal my show. Now the whole choir said he's back here too. Now I want to hear the preacher say he's up here. He's up here. Shout he's up here. Can y'all say it like I said, I'm down. He's up here too. And tell him I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. And tell somebody I ain't ashamed. Come on, tell him I'm not ashamed. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord.
Because when you feel like that you have arrived, you won't try, you won't strive for any more. Anytime I come into the house of God, that's that's the reason. I'm like, I pr I'm a praiser. I'm like the usher. The usher who, um, one of my ushers years ago, um, he was praising the Lord and he was dancing. And they had their little badges on. And somebody told him, said that, um, now you're an usher. You're supposed to be watching the folk. And you're not supposed to be dancing. He said, uh, you mean I can't dance? They said, you're supposed to be watching the people. He reached up in his pocket and pulled that badge off. He said, take this badge if I can't praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel the same way, praise the Lord. Bishop, Bishop Blake said to our class, he said, do not allow the bishopry to make you lose your anointing. He said, I want you all to help me. I want this class to help me. He said, many of our bishops are just sitting stiff. He said, but I want, us, I want you all to uh, be alive and be appreciative, not of the bishopric, but appreciative of your God. Don't lose your God. Don't lose what God has done. And I know that it might not be dignified the way I act sometimes, but praise the Lord, this is me. And you worry about you. Worry about you, amen. Because any time when I get to thinking, I get to thinking about where God brought me from, amen. Something just start moving, uh, amen. The music don't have to be playing, and don't have to have a hundred folks clapping their hands. All I need, all I need is just, Lord, don't let my mind leave. Don't, don't let my mind need me because as long as I can think, as long as I can think, I can think. I think and I think. I think about, amen, a little boy from Morton, Arkansas. And the only reason the town continued to be on the map is because of its liquor sales. <laughs> Amen. All the towns around it, Conway, Russellville, grew. But Marlton did not grow. And the only thing that kept it, Amen, afloat, Russellville and Conway were coming by liquor. Because both of those towns are dry. Amen. And I, would, I grew up in the midst of that liquor drinking place. Not only was I drinking that there, but I was drinking home brew. A blind man was making. He didn't know what he was putting in. Pentecost, it must be a new wine. <laughs> but at 17, at 17 years old, maybe 16, I met a little girl, amen, that was sanctified in the church of God in Christ, a church I never heard about. Didn't know anything about. There was no Church of God in Christ in Marlton. Amen. Uh, I met her and went and visited her church. And it blew my mind. Never did I, never had I seen anybody act the way that they were acting. Up in church. Dancing. Up in church. I'm thinking they ought to be ashamed. <laughs> 
dancing in church. And what I'm thinking, what in the world is going on up in this place? And I told my friends, I said, man, I went to this church and the folk were dancing. They said, you lying? I said, no. <laughs> they said, what were they doing? I said, I don't know. It wasn't a monkey, it wasn't a swim, it wasn't a frog. It wasn't a chicken, it wasn't a duck, it wasn't a walk tussle. It wasn't a twist. It wasn't a two-step. I said, everybody was doing something different. I said, the pastor was dancing and pointing at his head like this. I said, I know he was losing his hair, but I don't know what he was. I don't know what all that was about. And they said, I said, I tell you what, you come and go with me next Sunday because I'm going back because I want to see yours. And I said, they probably going to be doing it again. I said, no, it looks like they do it all the time. But bless be God, amen. I, I kept going to the church and I stopped. I stopped looking and laughing and started listening. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard things that I had never heard before. Saw things in the Bible that I'd never seen before, never heard. And I grabbed a hold of it, trying to, she told me I won't get saved, but if you want me, you got to be saved. Yeah. Amen. I had been smoking since I was nine years old. Drinking at 12 and 13, getting drunk at 15. Amen. So I tried to start trying to put that stuff down. Amen. But I went to a meeting one night. On August the 21st, which was a Saturday night. Amen. It was Easter Eve. And I went to bed that night. There was a revival supposed to be coming to Moralton on my big birthday, May 21st. And I said, well, what I will do, I will wait until May 21st and I'll get saved, what they call saved, and, and join a church. And uh, But the Lord, on April 21st, while I was asleep, the Lord woke me up out of my sleep and said, if you die tonight, where will your soul spend eternity? I looked around. I looked around. I felt kind of like Samuel. I looked around. I got up. I thought my mother was talking to me. Nobody was at the house, but I'm the baby of the family. Everybody was gone but me and her. And I was back in the back, and I went back, and she was sound asleep, and I knew she was because she was snoring. <laughs> I took after her. And <laughs> And I, I, I went back and I heard the voice of God again. The first time I ever heard. Amen. I said, Lord, if you give me a chance, I'll go to Russellville to that church and I'll get saved. Innocent in my talk because I didn't really know. Got up, went to my church that Sunday morning and went to Russellville that night, around nine something, April 22nd, yes, they made an altar call. Yes, and I went to the altar, got down on my knees. Y'all remember getting on your knees? This church was a getting on your knees, getting saved in church. Got down on my knees and I told them, they said, tell the Lord to save you. I said, save me, Lord. They said, keep on telling him to save you. I said, save me, Lord, save me, Lord. And I was keeping my eyes on Joyce. Looking on that time. Tears was coming down. I said, she ain't paying me no attention. I said, I'm behind. I better catch up. Didn't know what was going on. But something. In the midst of mine. Amen. Going to the altar to try to get her. Amen. Something. Amen. Got a hold of me. And praise God, that's been 57 years ago. I've been preaching in August, will be 57 years I've been preaching. 
Pastor of the same church this year, 50 years. Amen. God has been good. And I praise him, amen, for you. For when I look out and see that you're praising the Lord, dressed up, looking good, and not worrying about whether your mascara is running or your makeup is getting all down your face. Uh, some of you, but some of you still cute with it. <laughs> Amen. But whatever, however you do it, just don't lose the power. <laughs> I don't want nobody to go away and say, well, he talks about makeup and everything. Amen. I, because I believe a little pain to make an old bar look better. <laughs> Today was awesome, y'all. Today was awesome. Amen. I had never seen that many people in a day service like we had on today. Had a sea of white. Amen. All of those, all the missionaries were in their habits. And, and the other ladies was in their white. Just like you were in your blue tonight. And I, I know that, I know that. I know what you all are saying. Amen. They, they tell us what to wear now. And da 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 da. Well, you go to McDonald's and work, they tell you what to wear. You can't go over to McDonald's with a Burger King thing, tell me you're going to work up again. I don't care what they say. Put you out of there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think, I think, I think that. Uh, you follow your leaders. And they're not going to put you out if you didn't have blue. All I'm concerned about right now, I'm getting ready to take the offer is green. <laughs> Amen. Mother worked so hard. This has been a trying year for her. But but you're loving on her. You're loving on her and, uh, amen, have made the bumps, have softened the blow by you telling I'm praying for you. Your telephone called and while she was going through that critical time. Amen. And she's adjusting. She's adjusting the other day checking in at the motel at the same time and she was wagging with that that what, what those what you call the thing a buggy cart with the uh mail hop amen when i i said mother let me help you amen i took the cart and pushed it and carried it to her room and i unloaded it she's like she said oh i just feel so bad got the bishop <laughs> handling my bag pushing this cart but ain't no way in the world right. I could stand That's to right. see her. Right. She said it wasn't that bad. We're dragging all those bags and stuff. And praise the Lord. 
and amen. And I sat there, amen. Remember, I'm a bishop, but I am a man. Yeah. Amen. I will still open the door and let a lady come in before right. I go. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. But you're the bishop. No, you're a lady. You're going Amen. through. Amen. So we thank God for your program committee. We thank God for all of the missionaries uh, who have worked untiringly to pull this together. And we thank God for all of you. Thank God for the superintendents, Amen. administrative assistant superintendents and pastors, Amen, who Amen. have turned aside and put all of their things on the back burner because everything was pointing towards this service here, Amen, the Women Convention. I want to thank the superintendents with all of our administrative assistant superintendents. Which, Mother, we came to tell you that we love you. Amen. And the choir is going to be behind you. All right, it's time for the minister to remain standing, all the men. We want mother, we keep eyes separate because we want mothers to know that, amen, that we as men, the brothers of the church, amen, support her in her leadership role. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Sister Missionary Vivian Phillips is going to come. Amen. Been knowing her about 40 years. Bow your hands, please. Father God, you said in all things, give thanks. Lord, we thank you for this night. Lord, we thank you for this offering that we're about to receive. We ask you to bless the ones that give, bless the ones that have not the so desire. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 All the ladies, take your seat. All the ladies. God bless the men. We're going to do the men offering and then we're going to do everybody else. All right, and uh, when, we, when we're doing the offering, I know sometimes you want us to rush through the offering, and uh, but... A special, a, we, a real good special. Yes, sir. Uh, and the special would be the same price we sold them for last year. <laughs> which is $12 for the adult and $10 for the youth. And will you please do us a favor? Order your t-shirts as soon as possible. Because what we do every year, we wait till the last minute, and then we end up with a lot of t-shirts based on people saying they're going to get them. So we ask you to please work with us. And then also, I want to announce why I'm up in August. Look at my paper. August the 21st to August the 23rd would be the men's conference. It would be held right here at the Great New Bible Way. And let, me, let, me, let me say it this way. Ladies, you are invited every night. Every night. And I'm saying that because this is our, I think, fourth year. Some of you pretty later than this blue. I haven't seen you. So it would be nice to see you every night. And if your husband's not here, please remind him that we'll be having our conference. And we voted last year on what color neckties we'll be wearing. Ladies, once again, we'll be wearing a royal blue necktie. So, ladies, if you will, you can wear something that same color. And every year we give a we give awards out every year, Deacon Darrell. He gonna, he gonna tell you who the awards would be. And we always give us three women and three men. And this year, uh, on the 21st, we're gonna be uh, recognizing the women. And this gonna the first one gonna be Sister Jackie Tatum of the New Day District. And the, the second recipient will be Sister Charlotte Jacobs of the Four Eyes 
Last but not least, our third recipient will be our supervisor, Jeanette Washington.
I'd like for them just to stand so you can see them. Yeah. about 14 but I thank God for these women of God and guess what even though they're not actively serving a district as the district missionary they are yet one and I love that you don't have to actually uh, be recognized in a title or position but yet loving God and serving God and his people and that's what it's about amen now I just want to say thank you again Bishop Anderson, for allowing the Department of Women this time to have our Safe Women's Convention Crusade. Thank you so much. I want to thank you, all of you, the, the Board of Administrative Assistants and Superintendents and Pastors, to all of the elders and ministers. Thank you for coming to cover us and to hold us up, to undergird us and to support us, because truly, we are workers together. We're all laboring together in the world. And I appreciate you. God bless you and thank you so much. And you know, I thank this great woman of God who served as our worship leader tonight, but she's also a great, district missionary. Yeah, she says she belongs to all to us and the third jurisdiction, but I'm going to tell you something. You can't have no two. You got to be first, baby. All right. All right. I don't want you slipping back across the line. I belong to y'all, but I belong to seven. No, you belong to us. Thank you all, all of my staff, the Board of Administrative Assistants, all of the district missionaries, all of the assistant district missionaries, and to all of the department workers, thank you so much. Amen. This has been an awesome meeting, and I thank every one of you for what you have done for me tonight. You have warmed my heart. You have touched me deeply, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And now, we're up to the highest part of our service. Praise God. I, 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 I thank God for the direction that he um, gave me to move in this year. Uh, because this has given us all an opportunity to see who we have right here among us and to give them an opportunity to exercise their gifts, their talents, and ministry. And uh, tonight we're going to be blessed with two of the assistant district missionaries. You know, they work behind the scenes. And a lot of times they're not highlighted or given an opportunity to come forth in this jurisdictional women meeting, but they work hard. And I love the fact that they understand their place and that they serve from the second chair. They do not try to usurp their authority over the district missionary with whom they serve. And that means so much. Tonight we're going to have two powerful young women that will be coming to minister the word of God to us. We're going to have assistant district missionary Christine Johnson, all the way from the Texas County District. That, that just amazes me because she looks quiet, but she's a powerful woman of God. You'll see. And then we have another precious vessel, assistant district missionary Vanessa Maxwell. Missionary Maxwell is also our assistant president of our jurisdictional YWCC. Amen. She's an awesome woman of God. Both of these women have been faithful and dutiful in their service. All I know about them is that they're saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost. 
field and back yes. and attack. Yes. And they are running for the Lord. Praise God. And I want you all to stand all over the audience after this anointed choir will come forth and render a sermonic selection. Prayerfully stand and receive Assistant District Missionary Christine Johnson after her Assistant District Missionary Vanessa Maxwell. God bless.
We come before you, God, asking you to look on us one more time, God. Lord, you are a good God. You are a great God. And you got all power in your hand. And God, we ask you to continue, continue to bless us, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would bring my mouth, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let the meditation of my heart be set where my sight. And God, you don't get the glory, but the glory is now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we give it to you, God, because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. We give honor to God tonight. We thank God for being here on tonight. And I just thank God for all of his many blessings. Truly, God is a good God. Amen. He's a mighty God. Amen. He's worthy to be lifted up. And I give him all the praise tonight Do his holy name. Amen. We praise and we thank God. Amen. And we know that the roll call, the uh, protocol has already been established. Amen. But you know when you've been in the church a whole lot of years, you know, you just kind of can't stand up here without giving honor to your leaders. Amen. And so if y'all would allow me, I would just like to say I thank God and I give honor to our prelate, uh, Bishop Anderson, and to his staff, and to Lady Anderson, amen, and her staff, and to, amen, our jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Watkins, amen, and to all the district missionaries, and to all the, the deacons, my own companion, amen. Where you at, Sugar? I need to see you stand up. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I thank God for him. Praise God. I thank God and I give honor to all of you under the sound of my voice tonight. Truly, and I just thank God for Mother Watkins, how that, you know, she didn't have to do it, but she did. Amen. And I'm standing here tonight, and I thank God for her tonight giving me this opportunity. And truly, I just thank God for her, how that, you know, she uh, she's making sure that the work of the Lord goes forward. It's not falling but she is making sure that the work of the Lord moves forward. And we thank God for her because she is a great leader. She is leading us to higher heights and deeper depths. Amen. And also while I'm standing, I would just like to take this opportunity to just go back a little bit. Amen. I thank God for Mother Anderson, Lady Anderson. Amen. I remember long years ago, I used to come to uh, the convocations and different services going on. Amen. And to show you how far I'm going back, Amen. At that time, our bishop was the state evangelist. Yes. Amen. And I used to come and I used to hear Lady Anderson get up, you know, and I have girls, you know, I have two grown daughters and a grown granddaughter. And I used to hear Lady Anderson get up and she would encourage the ladies and she would let them know that, you know, you don't have to settle for anything, but you can wait for the best that God has for you. Amen. And I just thank God, you know, for her, because she has a heart for the women of God. Amen. She's always encouraging us and letting us know, you know, that we need to be in these services to get, you know, equipped with what God has for us. Amen. Truly, I thank God for her. We have, you know, two beautiful ladies leading us. Uh, we thank God for you. Amen. And I'm not going to prolong the time. I'm going to try to move forward. Amen. Truly, the Lord has been blessing us on, on this week. Amen. And we have a wonderful thing that says God's unlimited power makes for unlimited accomplishments. Amen. And I'm going to try to stay in that vein and work this all in. Amen. And I, I don't pretend to be before you very long. Amen. I don't intend to be before you very long. But if the Lord says so, it will be so. Amen. Uh, but tonight, uh, we're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verses 1 through 18. And for time's sake, we're not going to read all of them, but we are going to focus in on two verses. Amen. And we're going to look at verse 14, and it says, When Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. And they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with trumpets. And then verse 18 said, Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed because they relied upon the God of their fathers. Amen. They relied upon the gods of their fathers. And you know, in this chapter we see and we learn that Rehoboam's son, Abijah, has begun to reign over Judah. 
And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And Jeroboam surrounded Abijah. He attacked from the front and the rear. And in the heat of battle, verse 14, they cried out to the Lord. Yes. Now whether God delivered Judah supernaturally through divine intervention or providentially through Abijah's army is not indicated. But what is known from verse 18 is that Judah prevailed, amen, they was given the victory because they relied on God. In other words, they depended on God. And it is from that 18th verse that I would like to zero in and talk to you from this simple thought. Don't lose your dependence on God. Don't lose your dependence on God. Now you know uh, Webster's Dictionary told me that depend meant to rely on, to place trust in, to lean on, count on, believe. Amen. If you know anything about God and if you really know him, you know and understand that he is a sovereign God. Amen. He is supreme. He's infinite. There's no end. He goes on and on. Amen. He is omnipotent. Meaning that he is all powerful. Yeah. Amen. Yes, our adversary, the devil, he's mighty. He has some power. Yeah. But God is omnipotent. He has all power. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He is omnipotent. Meaning that he knows all things. Uh -huh. Amen. He knows what we're going to think before we think. Yeah. Amen. While we're trying to work it out, while we're trying to think about how we're going to do it, he already worked it out. He knows all things. Yeah. Amen. He is omnipresent. Meaning that he can be everywhere at the same time. Amen. We don't have to worry about God over here helping somebody else. And we stand over here waiting in the wings, waiting on him. He's everywhere at the same time. He's on the prison. Amen. And we know that God, he's all that and he's a more. Amen. We can lean and we can depend on him. We can't afford to lose our dependence on God. Amen. And we know that in this life there are a lot of things and people that we sometimes place our trust in. Amen. We lean on them. We rely on them. Amen. Some trust in their bank accounts. Some lean on people. Some rely on their jobs to always be there and be a reservoir that can be drawn from continuously. But let me let you know tonight. I mean, that's not true because you can't draw from your bank accounts continuously. You can't even draw from people continuously. Amen. You might have a friend that's very dependable. Amen. And you call them 50 times. Amen. But on that 51st time, they can't come to see about you. Amen. That's not continuously. That is not continuously. Amen. And you might, you might have worked and you got some money in the bank. Amen. But you go to the bank and we got all this high power technology. You go to the bank, you can't draw it out. The computer system down. You can't get your money. You can't get your money. That's not continuously. That's not continuously. Amen. We know that God is not like that. He said in his word that he would never leave us. All for sake of. Amen. He is always there. He is a solid rock that won't give away or won't run job. We can't lay too much on him and we can't place too much in his hands. Amen. And as I was going forth in this message, I thought about how that, you know, my husband and I, we was on vacation one time and, you know, we were, you know, just frustrated. We were at the hotel waiting on the elevator. Amen. And everybody just got tired. We were just waiting on that elevator. Amen. And the elevator finally came. Amen. And everybody just jumped on them. Amen. Everybody. It was a, it was a Lord who was. Everybody jumped on them. We tried to wait. Amen. And we pushed that button. And that button in that elevator didn't move. We had exceeded the capacity. We had to, to, to exceeded it. Amen. So it didn't move. But God is not like that. Amen. We, it doesn't matter what we lay on him. He can have it. Amen. He will lift us up. Amen. He can. He will. He will lift us up. Amen. And you know, I thought about, you know, how that we are blessed. Blessed beyond measure. We have beautiful homes, fine clothes, fine cars, and food on our table. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that, having the best. God desires to see us blessed. He blesses us. Just like he did in Joshua 24. In those verses, God reminded his chosen people how he had abundantly blessed them. He brought them out of Egypt, and when Pharaoh pursued them, he allowed the sea to swallow them up. And he also reminded them of how he had allowed them to possess the promised land. Amen. But that 13th verse, which really reminded me of us, 
was so self-explanatory and powerful, God said, I have given you a land for which you did not labor. I have given you cities which you did not build. And you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. Amen. If that was the favor of God. Amen. We're all sitting here today. I know that I can say that we are experiencing the favor of God. Just because he loved us. Just because he loved them. Amen. And he promised. So that lets us know that God wants us blessed. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not the neck. We are the lender and not the body. Amen. We are the future people of raw priesthood. Amen. But this, this is it. This is it. Watch it. Watch it. But the problem is when we become self-sufficient, which is so easy to become, when we have so much, and we lose our dependence,
no. I was tapped into that unlimited power. I depended on God. Amen. He put his trust in God. His army was reduced to, to 300. Amen. But he was tapped into that unlimited power. Amen. And God gave him the victory. And Daniel, amen, Daniel did not fear what man could do to him. Come here, Daniel, you can't pray no more. You can't pray no more. But Daniel kept on praying. Amen. He kept on praying, amen, because he knew that God would take care of him, that God would be there for him. Amen. He was dependent on God. Amen. And Esther, she said, if I perish, I perish. Absolute confidence and dependence on God. Amen. Her life was at stake. Amen. But she said, if I perish, I perish. Amen. And we got to have that same dependence and confidence in God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, if our God don't do it, amen, we know he can. For my sake, 
and the gospel, the same shall save it. Many people spend all their time and energy seeking pleasures, possessions, positions, power, and etc. Whatever you have on earth is only temporary. It cannot be exchanged for your soul. If you work hard at getting only material things that will surely pass away, what are you going to do? What you want may be pleasurable life things, but they shall surely pass away. And in the end, you will find yourself hollow and empty. Follow Jesus and you will know what it means to live abundantly. Now and to have eternal life as well. For God wants his people to be blessed and have nice things. But the key is to keep Jesus at the center of your life. Matthew 6 and 33 states, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. For I can recall a song with lyrics, Kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away. But there is something, something about that name. Jesus, there is something about his name. I am reminded of two famous movies. New Jack City and Scarface. Uh-huh, y'all might not have watched them. That might have been too deep for some folks. Both main actors, they played the role of wanting more money and power. They would continually quote and state that the world is mine. They had many possessions, but no God. At the end of both movies, both actors were killed. What are you saying, missionary? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We are to always acknowledge God. For Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. We must submit ourselves wholeheartedly to God and know without God, we could not do nothing. God equips us with skills and knowledge to perform daily tasks. For the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. For Galatians 6 and 9 says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. But he that soweth in 
because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.